Hi, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Sergeant Mike McCutcheon, and I'm gonna be your instructor for today. For the last two years, I've made these videos, and I've showed you how to lift fingerprints off of all kinds of surfaces, textured surfaces, blood fingerprints, using chemicals, uh, magnetic powders, different sprays, small particle re reagent, all that kind of stuff. But what I failed to do is show you just the basic fingerprint processing using a fingerprint brush and your powder. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna just show you how to use these two things without doing a fuming chamber, without using a fuming wand or anything like that. So the two things that you need, of course, you need a high quality powder. I'm gonna use black today. And you need a high quality brush. Um, this brush is uh, from Lynn Peavy. I find it has less friction when I'm dusting. It's a, it's a fantastic brush. So th these are the two products that I'm gonna use today. And then I'm gonna show you how to lift them. And I'm gonna use a hinge lifter and I'm also going to use some clear lifting tape. It's very basic, but it'll show you how you can lift the fingerprint and get the best results and show all those grooves and, and ridges on your fingers. Wonderful, wonderful. So here we go. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gloves on. Now remember the rule of fingerprinting. If your partner doesn't put gloves on and he touches his face and he has fingerprint powder on his face, you don't say anything. You let him wear that all day. That's the first rule. Okay, so now I've got my gloves on. One of the major problems that we have with fingerprinting is people using too much powder. They're using too much powder. So this here, what's in the, the cover is probably enough to dust all of the, the items that I have on the table. I'm just using some, some easy tiles for demonstration purposes, but you do not need a lot of powder, especially if it's not a new brush. So this brush here I've had for quite some time. I'm just gonna fan it out. So this brush I've had for some time, it already has some powder left on it, but we're just going to spin that lightly. And I'm actually gonna go in the close up to show you this. I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to just spin it lightly like this. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the sides of the brush to touch the powder. That's what I'm looking for. So I have my powder, now I have my, my item. Now again, one of the problems is too much. You're not dipping this in like this. You'll get powder everywhere. It's way too much. You can always add some. It's more difficult to take powder out. So I'm going to go in the close up. I'm actually going to actually dust. So I have my dust on my, my, my brush. So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm lightly spinning. As you can see, I'm spinning the brush with my fingers. I have it in two fingers. It's very light, and I'm just spinning it. And then I'm just using the side. I'm not dabbing it in. I'm not painting it like this. You can see I'll paint that print right off. Very light, very, very light. Okay, now you got a gorgeous print right here. Tons of rigid detail. You would go ahead and put your scale next to it for a photograph. Beautiful, beautiful print. Very, very simple. So that's how we used it with the fingerprint brush. Super easy, super easy. It just takes practice. Now some of the problems you can have, I showed you, is if you're going to be dipping that into your powder, you're going to have too much. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and put back a, uh, a clean tile. I'm actually <laughs> dipping this in. This is making a huge mess. All right, and now I'm going to dust that, and this is what you get. And now you're, you're trying to find the fingerprints. There's some on here. There's one right here. There's one right here, but it's... Now I'm sweeping it off to try to clean it up, but now I'm, I'm losing my print. Too much is... is the worst thing you can do. Okay, so that's one of the problems we have. So let's go back to our fantastic print. Now the first thing we want to do before we lift is we want to photograph this. We want to photograph it. If you're on patrol and you only have a point and shoot camera, I would suggest that you turn off the flash and use your, your flashlight as the light to get it from 45 degrees to light up that fingerprint 
if you're using your point and shoot. If, you're, uh, if you have a nice DSLR camera, you're going to want to use an aperture that's smaller. Usually we shoot a, a crime scene in like F11 or so. Well this, I would say bump that up. Bump it up to F22 if you can. And the reason why is because we shake. And that way, if it's the smaller aperture, the F22, it's going to make sure that that print's going to be in focus. And remember, we're going to shoot in RAW. Okay, so now we have that, we have it labeled. You can use a little sticky, I have these little sticky stickers on here uh, that I, I, I showed in the close-up. If you wanted to use a scale, a regular scale and put that next to it, you can, you can do that as well. Um, that, that's fine, um, not an issue there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and lift this print. I'm gonna actually dust a few of them so that way I can lift it with a uh, I'm going to go ahead and lift that with a hinge lifter, and then I'm going to also lift that, and there's probably plenty on this brush, uh, and then I'm going to lift it with some tape and show you the difference. Okay, so here I have my prints. I have my big mess over here in the close-up. I'm going to put that right here. And now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change my gloves because these are filthy from using too much print, too much dust the first time. All right, so let's get these on. Okay, so the first one I'm going to use, I'm just going to use a regular tape. It's just regular lifting tape. When you do your tape, always leave that little flap so the person next can pull the, the tape off. If you don't leave that little flap, they're never going to get it. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to pull the, how much I need. And I'm going to fold it over in half like this. Made a little triangle, and that way... I can just pull it, ta-da, beautiful rip. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to the close-up, and I'm going to lift this print right here, okay? So I'm going to just put the tape right on top. Now, if you fumed it, you could dust and lift this over and over again. Well, we didn't fume it. We were just out on patrol. We had this print. We didn't want to wait for detectives, and we're going to go ahead and lift that. So now I'm going to push on it. I have it in there. I'm going to pull it off. Now you'll see in the close-up, the print's gone. We may be able to dust it again and try to develop it. No, nothing there. So now I have my print, and I'm ill-prepared. I didn't take out my, my backing cards. Normally you would have this ready. So now I have my backing card. I'm going to go back in for the, to the close-up. And then I'm going to take my lifted print and I'm just going to push it on my backing card. Ta-da! Beautiful. So now here you have your print on the back side. And again, I used so much powder here to show you using too much powder. It's making a mess. But on the back, you can see where you're able to write where you found it, who lifted it, where it was lifted from, a, di uh, a diagram if you lifted it from a window where that would be. You could put it, it was in the top corner and the bottom wherever you wanted that to be. But that's easy. Again, it's a mess with all the, uh, the extra powder. But beautiful print, nice and easy with the tape. Now, when I first started, I never used tape. I always used a hinge lifter. And a hinge lifter is going to work just like the tape, it's just what it says. It's got a little hinge. And then this side has, is sticky, and this side is clear. Um, they have different colors or whatnot, and I'm going to go in for the close-up to show you how to do this properly because um, if you get this technique down, it works beautiful every time. Let me show you. So I'm going to put a white one here so that we can really see my hands. So here is the, the peel on here. So I'm going to peel this off, and now this part here is the sticky part. That's sticky, okay? That's the sticky part. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and push that. I keep my pointer finger free, put it on the back, so now I can go right over the print and push right down with my pointer finger. So I'm actually holding this with, with my ring finger and my thumb. So then I can push it down with my pointing finger. Now I can lift that up. Again, that print's going to be gone because I didn't fume that. 
Actually, I'll stay in the close-up to show you. Now I'm going to just fold this over. This side doesn't have any sticky. This is just glass, so you want to make sure, and that's why you hold it like this, because you don't want this part to touch the, the dirty. So you're going to keep that up. Now we're going to flip it. I like to go from the corner to try to keep any air bubbles out. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. And put against my white background. Now we have a beautiful print in there. Beautiful print. Now some of these may not be coming out as clear as I had wanted, only because I used all that extra powder. I got it all over my hands. I got it all over the table. I can't stress that enough. You do not use too much powder. It is absolutely a disaster, and it's incredibly difficult to clean up. Just a little, little, little bit. Um, now you can do this technique with a a brush that you've used uh, a bunch of times. If it's a, a, a scene that you think you might need DNA, you can use a disposable brush. We have disposable little packets of powder. You can do all that kind of stuff. But that's the basic intro on how to, on how to process a fingerprint. I also suggest, very cheap, is you can get a magnifying glass. Just one like this is a couple bucks. You can get a real expensive one like that that has a, a Henry disc in it. But this is really going to help you when you're looking for your fingerprints. It's invaluable, very wonderful tool. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can watch all my videos on ForensicEducation.net. And you can also see me. I'll be doing a training in uh, Pennsylvania in April, and that's also on my website if you're interested in that. Um, I hope you join me next time. Thanks for watching.